Hey folks, and welcome back to The Mortgage Farmer. In this video, we're going to solve for you that age-old question. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? No, not really. Are you a budding investor? Are you someone that has decided that real estate is something that you want to have in your financial portfolio? Maybe you've got some of the things that you need to start into that investment property world. Maybe you don't. Well, I might have a program here that could help bridge the gap for you in enabling you to get started. A lot of times that first step, that first investment property is the hardest one to be able to acquire. In this short video, we're going to talk about some programs that are out there, specifically one program that may help the first time investment property person to get their foot in the door and begin growing their wealth through real estate. Come along with me as we talk about this loan program and some of the ins and outs, and uh, maybe we try once again to solve that chicken or egg question. Come on with me and let's talk about it. So what we've got is a situation where you're an individual, you own your primary residence, and you would like to begin purchasing investment properties. But the problem that you run into is that if you've already got a primary residence, you've got a monthly payment that's tied to that primary residence, and maybe you have a decent income, good income, but not enough income to carry blindly the new mortgage payment on this investment property that you would like to purchase. You've got great credit, you're already a homeowner, you've got a good job, and you've got the down payment for your first investment property, but you're struggling in getting yourself over the hump in being able to qualify for that mortgage on that investment property because since you don't own it yet, there isn't rental income from it that you can count for qualifying. Or is there? There's a program out there. Uh, by the way, in the mortgage industry, we are renowned for creating acronyms. Sometimes we have created acronyms from acronyms. I'll give you a perfect example of that. Uh, back in uh, 2010, 2011, 2012, we had the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, otherwise known as RESPA, and then we had something called the Truth in Lending Act, otherwise known as TILA. And we went into the lab, we, your regulatory bodies, went into the lab and they put TILA and RESPA together and created TRID, the TILA RESPA Integrated Disclosures, TRID. Okay. That was a, a flash back into time. So this new program that we've got, and actually it's not new, but I'm talking about it today for the first time, is called the DSCR, Debt Service Coverage Ratio. The premise behind this is that you can use proposed income from this investment property that you haven't bought yet to qualify to buy that particular investment property. Come on, let's have a seat and let's dig into the numbers a little bit. Okay, let's put this in perspective. So the debt service coverage ratio is a, a, a fancy way of saying what we're going to do is allow you to show us proposed income from the investment property you're about to purchase and singularly use that income to qualify for the house that you're buying. Now, we're going to talk about it here in a minute, and I'm going to get a little bit deeper in the weeds, but I'm going to try to keep this as much of a 10,000-foot view as possible, just so that we don't get too caught up. If you want more specific information, please reach out to the mortgage farmer or to your mortgage professional and allow them to explain to you some of the intricacies of this program. But the idea behind it is, even if your debt ratio, and by the way, if you're not sure what a debt ratio is go back and look at one of my videos for the first time homebuyer series where we talk about calculating your debt to income ratio. If you personally, if your debt to income ratio is 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, whatever that number is, and obviously that's a pretty high number, but even if it, that's what it is, 
in a conventional world, that would preclude you from buying a new house of any kind, much less an investment property. But if you're looking specifically at an investment property, what the debt service coverage ratio DSCR program does is it allows the property that you're purchasing to stand on its own. Can the income created from that property cover the debt obligation, monthly maintenance on it, that is created by the purchase of that property. Now, in a typical world, you're still going to put 20% down. You can put more if you want a little bit better interest rate. This program does allow you to go, in some cases, to as little as 15% down. We're not going to get hung up on the exact loan-to-value requirements in this. This is more explaining how the program works. So, while I'm talking here, I'm going to put on the screen here so that you can see it, a hypothetical scenario. Let's say, for instance, that you purchase a home for, uh, an investment property for $300,000 and you put 20% down. That will be a loan amount of $240,000. Bear with me now, the numbers I'm giving you are just informational. This does not mean this is what the payment will be, but let's say, that on that $240,000 loan, you're going to have a mortgage payment, principal and interest, taxes and insurance, and if there's any homeowners association and homeowners association dues, let's say that total payment is $1,500 per month. Now, let's say that the property is either already rented and has, a, and has an existing lease on it, or we get an appraisal done and the appraiser gives us an estimate of the market rent on that property. And in either case, let's say that the rents earned from that property are $2,000 per month. Well, if you're looking at a situation where you've got $2,000 a month in income, but you've got $1,500 a month in total debts, that is a debt service coverage ratio of 1.33 or one and a third. Typically, on the DSCR programs, anything greater than one is something that can be done. And, and in some cases, less than one, and it can still be done, we're talking about strong borrowers that probably have more than one investment property and have put more money down on it. But anyway, that was just one example. So basically, the way this program works is, as I just explained, you will create, uh, just like we did in the debt ratio calculation in a previous video, we will calculate the DSCR by having a fraction. And the numerator will be the rents, either that a lease is documenting the property is earning, or projected market rent by an appraiser. And by the way, that's the more popular way to go about it is, is you're going to get an appraisal done anyway. We just have what's called a market rent analysis added to the appraisal and the appraiser gives us an idea as to what market rents are. So the numerator is the rent on the property. The denominator is the monthly obligation that you'll have on this particular product, principal and interest, taxes and insurance, and also homeowners association dues if it has those. And you just take the top number and divide by the bottom number. And if that number is greater than one, then you're probably okay. Now, the DSCR program does require good credit. They will go as low as probably 700. Um, I don't know of a situation that will go below that, but we'll look at it. You know, check that. I know of a program now that will, in certain cases, allow it to go much lower than that. You can imagine the interest rate might be impacted because of that. But if you've got good credit and you currently own your primary residence, and if you now if you own another investment property as well, that may put you in a slightly more attractive bucket from an interest rate standpoint. But the key is you must be a homeowner to participate in the DSCR program. You have to own a home. You can't be a renter 
and then go and purchase your first property as an investment property on this program. It, it can be done in other programs, but on this program, you need to own your residence as it is now. now you can have a mortgage on it, but own your residence, and then you're eligible for this program. I'm going to uh, cut us off at this point. I don't want to go too deep on this, but again, the DSCR or debt service coverage ratio loan program allows you to obtain a loan that basically stands on its own merits based upon the projected rent and the mortgage obligation that you'll have on it. I hope this helps you. I hope this puts another arrow in your quiver. If you're someone that has thought about wanting to get into the investment game, real estate is a great way to diversify your financial portfolio. I would encourage you to uh, speak with a mortgage professional, and again, speak with a real estate professional to help guide you in which types of properties are a little more attractive from an investment standpoint. Thanks for watching this video. Please hit that subscribe button. Please like the video. We grow the traffic by doing that. I will come back to you hopefully fairly soon with another good video from right here at The Mortgage Farmer.